My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. In this video, we'll deal with few problems dealing with the notion of exponents. Sort of problems that deal with the concept of exponents that you're likely to encounter if you're preparing for GRE, GMAT, TES, HESES, SAT, SAT, the typical standardized exam. How do they go about testing whether or not you know how to manipulate your exponents? We'll do, as I said, few problems, about exactly 10 to be precise. We'll do five in this video. This is the first part, one of two, and we'll do five in the next video. We'll do five or six. Okay, let's get going. So what I want you to do is, as soon as I set up the problem on the blackboard, as soon as I explain the problem to you, what it is that you're looking for, I want you to pause the video, as we always do, and do the problem yourself first. And once you've done so, once you've done the problem yourself, and then, then come, at that point, resume the video, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. And do that, er do that for every single problem without my having to remind you every time. Do you understand? Here we go. Here's the first one. The first problem that you see there is a sort of problem that appears quantitative that appears in the kind of questions that are known as quantitative comparison. You will see here quantitative comparison. They appear in the GRE. There are 70 videos here from day number 401 to day 470, quantitative comparison questions. If you need more practice with the quantitative comparison questions, watch those 70 videos there. So here, we are asked to compare two quantities, quantity in column A and quantity in column B. And here are the quantities, 5 raised to 20 minus 5 raised to 19 over 5 versus 5 raised to 18. And if, the, if it turns out that you feel that the quantity in column A is bigger, then we are to pick answer choice A. If you feel that the quantity in column B is bigger, you will pick answer choice B. If you decide that the two quantities are in fact equal to each other, then the answer would be C. And if you decide that there isn't enough information, then the answer would be D. There is no answer choice E here. There are only four possible answers, A, B, C, and D. Pause the video, do it yourself. All right, so here we go. First thing we want to do is get rid of this annoying denominator from here. Denominators are very annoying. If you find one, get rid of it as soon as you can. How do we get rid of this denominator from, from, from this side? It's very simple. Multiply both columns by five. As long as you're multiplying both columns by a positive number, you're fine, as long as the numbers are positive. If you multiply both columns by a negative number, of course, it's going to change the direction. For example, which number is bigger, 2 or 5? Obviously, 5 is bigger. Of course, 5 is bigger. But if I ask to compare 5, 2 versus 5, and you multiply both sides by negative 3, then, of course, negative 15 is actually less than the negative 6. So you cannot multiply both sides by a negative number. But when I say side, I mean the both columns. We cannot multiply with columns by negative numbers because that will switch the direction of the inequality. But as long as the numbers are positive, we can multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 so we can get rid of this 5 here. That part is done. Okay? So what are we left with at this point? In the first column, once we get rid of the 5, we are left with 5 raised to 20 versus or minus 5 raised to 19. And here we have 5 raised to 18 times 5 raised to 1, which is same as 5 raised to 19. Are you with me so far in the story? Let's add this quantity, this quantity here, so that we can get rid of it. 5 raised to 19. Let's add to both sides. 5 raised to 19. Are you with me so far still? When we add the two quantities, as long as we are adding the same quantity to both sides, both, both columns, we have not changed anything. The inequality would not be affected. 5 raised to 19 is going to drop out. That was the whole idea. Here we are left with 5 raised to 20. And here we are left with 5 raised to 20 plus, this is a plus, 5 raised, to, 5 raised to 19 rather, plus 5 raised to 19. Well, 5 raised to 19 plus 5 raised to 19 is same as 2 times 5 raised to 19. And here we have 5 raised to 20, which is same as 5 times 5 raised to 19. That's it. 5 times 5 raised to 19, of course, is bigger than 2 times 5 raised to 19. Or if you like, we could have gone one more step. We could have gone one more step. Let's divide both columns by 5 raised to 19. When we divide both columns by 5 raised to 19, that's gone. And of course, 5 is bigger than 2. The answer in this case is A. That's the idea. The next problem that I'm going to give you on the blackboard, I want you to do it yourself. It's a very similar problem, very similar concept, very similar steps. Nothing different, just a number quantity of the difference. So, so here's, here's the next problem for you. You do it yourself, okay? As I said, question number 2. 
2 raised to 50 minus 2 raised to 49, 2 raised to 49 versus 2 raised to 48. Do it yourself. That's a 49. That's a 49. Do it yourself as I said and then we'll do it together. Pause the video, do it yourself. As you can see, it's a similar concept, same, same similar problem. Instead of 5 as to 20, we have 2 as to 50. That's all I've done here. So let's do it together. But the steps are going to be exactly the same as before, nothing different. So let's, let's add... Oh, sorry, I left something out. It is over 2, just like before. Sorry, I left that out. So do it again if you have to. 5 raised to 50 minus 2 raised to 49 over 2 versus 2 raised to 48. Same exact setup as before, as I said before. Same exact setup as before. So let's get rid of the 2 from the bottom. We get rid of the 2 from the bottom. The 2 is going to be gone and we are left with 2 raised to 50 minus 2 raised to 49. And here we are left, left with 2 times 2 raised to, two, four, 2 raised to 48 times times 2 raised to 1. Which of course is same as 2 raised to 49. Let's add 2 raised to 49 to both sides. So here we're going to end up with 2 times 2 raised to 49, of course, because we have one here, another one here, and here 2 raised to 49 drops out, and we are left with 2 raised to 50. 2 raised to 50 versus 2 times 2 raised to 49, which is same as 2 raised to 1 times 2 raised to 49, which of course is the same as 2 raised to 50. The answer here is C. The two quantities are equal. Let's do one more, shall we? Number 3. Number three. I don't want to keep reminding you that as soon as I write the problem, I want you to do it yourself. You will get more out of it that way. Question number three. Three raised to five. Three raised to five times seven raised to six versus 7 times 21 raised to 5. These are, these are all quantitative comparison questions. We're going to do probably 6 of them today and they're going to be all same questions, quantitative comparison. We're starting from number 7, we're going to do multiple choice questions and those I'm going to do in a different video, separate video. So today we'll do 6 of them and as I said they're going to be all quantitative comparison where we are comparing two quantities. Again 3 raised to 5 times 3 raised to 3, 3 raised to 5 times 7 raised to 6 versus 7 times 21 raised to 5. Do it yourself. Well the first thing we have to understand, okay if you want to do it yourself, post the video as I said do it yourself. First thing we need to understand here is that 20, 21 raised to 5 is simply same as 7 raised to 5 times 3 raised to 5. This quantity that you see here is same as this quantity, times 7. And here we have 3 raised to 5 times 7 raised to 6, which can be written as 7 raised to 5 times 7. You with me? Now we see there, we see 7 raised to 5 here, and we see 7 raised to 5 here. If you divide both columns by the same quantity, it disappears. Similarly, we see 3 raised to 5 here, we see 3 raised to 5 here, Let's divide both columns by 3 raised to 5 and we can get rid of this guy. Let's see if we are done. Oh, it looks like the two quantities are equal. 7, seven versus 7. I didn't realize it. These two quantities are equal. We end up with 7 versus 7. That was very straightforward, wasn't it? Let's do one more, shall we? Number 4. You do it yourself. Let's do number four. Nine raised to five times four raised to six versus one hundred and eight times thirty six raised to four. Thirty six raised to four. Again, the same exact concept as before. Not these two questions are very similar, which is why I'm doing them together next to each other. 21 raised to 5, we broke it up into 7 raised to 5 times 3 raised to 5 because we had a 7 raised to 5 here. We can get a 7 raised to 5 out of here and we have a 3 raised to 5 here. That was our cue that we need to break this 21 into 3 and a 7. Here we have 36 and we have a 9 and a 4. Let's break that up into 9 and a 4. So that can be written as 
108 times 9 raised to 4 times 4 raised to 4 because 9 times 4 is 36 and here we have 9 raised to 5 but we have a 9 raised to 4 here so let's put that as 9 raised to 4 times 9 so that takes care of this part times 4 raised to 6 we have, we have 4 raised to 4 so I'm going to write that as 4 raised to 4 times 4 raised to 2 or times 4 if you like are you still with me? This is not the only way, obviously. There are a million different ways you could have looked at it. This is just what, appear, what occurs to me right now. And if I were to do, and if I were to do the same problem a little bit later or tomorrow, I might do it in a different. I might approach it in a little bit different way. This is not the only way, obviously. So let's get going. Nine raised to four and nine raised to four. Divide both sides by nine raised to four. It goes away. Four raised to four and four raised to four. Let's divide both columns by four raised to four. It goes away. So essentially we are asked to compare 108 versus 9 times 4 times 4. How do we know if a number is divisible by 4? How do we know if, see I see a 4 here, how do we know if the number is divisible by 4? We learned this thing a long time ago, I don't remember which day, but in our basic math series, basic math day 1 through 100, not all the way up to 200, but in the first 100 videos, if, if you want to learn the rules of divisibility, just search for rules of divisibility and type in my name name next to it. Anytime you want to learn any math concept, just type, write down the name of the concept, name of the concept, along with my name, Kishwani, it will pop right up. You know, there is always something there, because I have over 2,000 videos on the channel, there is always something there on, 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 on most concepts that you will encounter in any one of these exams, as I said before. So look for rules of divisibility in, the, on, in that video. On that day, we learned that the number is divisible by four, if the last two digits of the given number are divisible by four. Not that sum of the two, not the sum of the two digits, but the last two digits themselves. Here, the last two digits in 108 are 0, 8. 0, 8 is just 8. And since 8 is divisible by 4, that tells us that 108 is divisible by 4. We don't have to worry about 100 because 100 is a multiple of 4. 100 is a multiple of 4, so it's 200, so it's 300. Any multiple of 100 is going to be divisible by 4 because 100 divided by 4 is 25. So we don't have to worry about the 100 digit or 1000 digit or 10,000 digit, we only have to worry about the last two digits. 0, 8 is 8, let's divide both columns by 4. If you divide 108 by 4, how many, how many 4's does 1 have? 1 has no 4's. 1 has no 4's. That 1 goes and joins the 0 and becomes 10. How many 4's does 10 have? 10 has 2 4's. 10 has 2 4's. 2 4's are 8. After we take away 8 from the, after we take away 8 from the 10, after we take away 8 from the 10, we are left with the remainder of 2. That 2 goes, we are left with 2 rather. We, we should, I shouldn't say we are left with the remainder of 2. That's, redund that's redundant. We are left with 2 or we have a remainder of 2. And that 2 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 28. And 28 has how many 4s? 28 has 7 4s. 7 4s are 28. There you go. Since we divided this side by 4, we must divide this side by 4, which means we can knock out one of the 4s. Now we see a 27 and we see a 9 here. We have a 9 here, we have a 9 here and 27 here. Let's divide both columns by 9. If we divide both columns by 9, this 9 is going to disappear and the 27 is going to become 3. We're left with 3 on this side and we're left with 4 on this side. 4 versus 3, the answer is A. Column A is bigger. The answer for this problem is A. Let's do number 5, shall we? Number 5. You have to be able to do these problems without doing long, tedious calculations because that is not the point of the that is not the point of the exam. The point of the exam, the point of the exam is not to see who is the biggest geek, biggest freak, biggest biggest nerd in the country. They're trying to see how quickly you can think. Do you understand? Here's another one, number five. Do it yourself. As I always remind you, do it yourself. Seven raised to twenty-seven minus. 7 raised to 26 versus 6 times 7 raised to 26. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Pause the video and do it yourself. Well, I see 7 raised to 26 and we see 7 raised to 27. Let's take out 7 raised to 26 as a common factor. Let's take out 7 raised to 26 as a common factor because we see that here. So if you take out 7 raised to 26 as a common factor here, 7 raised to 27, 7 raised to 27, essentially, well, or if you like, we can do it in steps if you like. 7 raised to 27 is the same as 7 times 7 raised to 26. 
and this one 7 to 26 is same as 1 times 7 to 26. Now I'm showing you the baby steps, you understand? Once we take out 7 to 26 as common, once we take out 7 to 26 as common, from this quantity we're left with 7. From this quantity here we're left with 7. That 7 comes here, minus this minus right here, and here we're left with 1. That minus comes here. That's it, we're done. Oh, I cannot do Answer cannot be C again. It is C. Answer is C. The 7 minus 1 is 6. So this is going to boil down to this is going to boil down to 7 raised to 26 times 6, which is exactly what we have here. The answer is C. The answer is C. Let's do one last one. Number 6, okay? Number 6, I'm going to erase the blackboard and we're going to do it together. Number 6 is going to require a little bit more room. And if you're able to do these problems like these, like, like the way we're doing together in an economical, efficient manner, that's great. And if, if not, then you need some practice. 9 raised to 10, this is our column A, again quantity to comparison, versus column B, where we have 9 raised to 9, plus 3 times 9 raised to 8 plus 6 times 9 raised to 8. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Why don't you do it? Why don't you try it yourself? Why don't you try it yourself? See what happens. Again, you see, I'm going to start the solution now. Here we see 9 raised to 8. Here I see 9 raised to 8. If we can somehow get 9 raised to 8 out of this one, we can take it out as a common factor. So why don't we do that? Instead of 9 raised to 9, why don't we write this as 9 raised to 8 times 9. There you go. Now we have a common factor of 9 raised to 8. Let's take that out as a common factor, which is why it's called common factor, because it appears in all the terms. So let's take, take, let's, let's take that out, 9 raised to 8. Once we have taken it out, from the first one, we can use a different color so you can see it. From the first one, once we have taken out 9 raised to 8, we are left with 9. From this, then we have a plus sign, and here we are left with a 3. Then we have a plus sign, and once we take out 9 raised to 8, we are left with 6. Let's see what that gives us, shall we? 9 plus 3 is 12, 12 plus 6 is 18. So we have 9 raised to 8 times 18. Let's write that 18, let's write that 18 as 9 times 2. Let's write this 18 as 9 times 2. So here we have 9 raised to 8, here we have 9 raised to 1, which can be written as 9 raised to 9 times 2. Oh there you go, we're almost done. 9 raised to 10 is same as 9 times 9 raised to 9. Divide both columns by 9 raised to 9. Well, you don't, have to, you don't even have to do anything. You can see clearly that 9 times this quantity is going to be bigger than 2 times that quantity right there. They're the same quantities. The answer, of course, is A. But here's, here's you divide both sides by, if you like, 9 raised to 9. If you divide both, both columns by 9 raised to 9, it drops out. And, of course, 9 is bigger than 2. The answer is A. The answer to this problem turned out to be A. So that was problem number 6. 7, 8, 9, and 10, those are not quantity to comparison questions. Those are going to be straightforward multiple choice questions. They're not going to be straightforward. When I say straightforward, I mean straightforward in the sense that they are multiple choice questions, not quantity to comparison questions. But these next four questions are going to be anything but straightforward. They're going to be a little bit more complicated. It's going to make you think. And the next four problems that we're going to do, those are the problems that are going to appear in the exam. Not as easy questions, but as medium and in most cases as hard problems. Whether you're preparing for GRE, GMAT, SAT, SAT, TES, or HESES, those are going to be a little bit more difficult. I'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye now.